After an extended introduction that involves fighting against suspiciously advanced German military technology, B.J. Blaskowitz awakens from a coma in a Polish hospital and finds himself face to face with the New Order. What this means is that the war has been over for years and Nazis are on top of the world. In fact, they're on top of the moon as well. Wolfenstein has always been about delivering bloody comeuppance to modern history's most hated villains, so you're going to be killing plenty of Nazis wherever you find them. So long as you don't get in the way of me killing Nazis, we'll see eye to eye. With a richly defined alternate history setting as a backdrop, the New Order also plays at bringing back a few gameplay elements that had died out during the evolution of shooters. And honestly, it feels like the world has room for a game that has you chowing down on gallon-sized cans of baked beans, polishing off a bowl of dog food, grabbing helmets and metal plates to armor up, then mowing down enemies with guns blazing in both hands. What have you been up to, Blaskowitz? Shooting, stabbing, strangling Nazis. Blasting things apart with loud, chunky weapons works on a basic level. Some of these weapons, like the auto shotgun, have a particularly solid feel to them and can do downright nasty things to a human body. It's rewarding to pull the trigger thanks to great feedback, but the game's combination of the old with the new is kind of an awkward mix that makes it tough to get the most out of the game's action. I'm sorry about your legs. Don't be. I've learned how to fly. BJ functions like a one-man army, a walking Noah's Ark of an arsenal carrying two of every weapon, but he's far from invincible. That you need to scrounge up med kits, food, and armor provides an interesting consideration that shapes the way you approach a firefight, but keeping yourself in fighting shape is tiresome. Grabbing so many individual items is a pain that's aggravated on consoles since you can't press the button to pick something up without taking your finger off the analog stick. Aggressive, constantly flanking enemies while entertaining to off make it difficult to scavenge during a fight unless you're in an extremely open area. If he is testing us, we are failing gloriously. Because it's so difficult to build and maintain a damage buffer without playing defensively and peeking around cover, the already risky strategy of going all out while dual wielding weapons feels even less viable since you'll naturally sacrifice health and ammo. You're rewarded with different perks depending on how you play, and a desire to unlock more perks may lead you to experiment, but it turns out that the most effective course of action in most scenarios is to play the game like a typical cover-based shooter that also forces downtime to replenish your health. Say it ain't so. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit more than just a war of attrition, though. You'll have frequent opportunities to go stealth with your knife or silenced pistol, which is a particularly good idea when you're facing enemy officers who, if left alive, will call in reinforcements when they detect you. Even though the sneaking and snuffing are quite basic, and playing this way will expose national socialists as unobservant ninnies, it's ultimately a good thing for the game's pacing, and helps players manage the game's increasingly stiff level of challenge. Wolfenstein tries to strike a balance between classic and modern design, but the game can't break from the established cinematic style that makes so many modern games feel phony and predictable. You'll often witness a cutscene, then briefly be given control to do some inconsequential task like hunting around an environment for particular items, and then go straight into another cutscene. Other times, you'll find yourself frustratingly stuck in the middle of some drama as a first-person spectator, unable to take action until things have gone horribly wrong. You're only able to exact revenge when you're given the go-ahead, and the vengeance might feel so artificially manufactured that it doesn't even feel worth it. Have you finished complaining? These Nazis aren't going to kill themselves, though, and the New Order will take you on a fairly lengthy tour of duty that's sometimes capable of impressing and even surprising you with environments detailed enough to feel like real places rather than simple video game levels. Despite a dumb plot, characters and relationships are sharply written and often border on believable. For now, this is top priority. There's also a second timeline in the game that provides minor differences in the experience if you decide to save one character over another, incentivizing a second playthrough if the first dozen hours didn't satisfy your bloodlust. You know, about before uh, going off on you like that, it's a force of habit. It's hard to play Wolfenstein The New Order without noticing some really interesting ideas, but the game seemingly can't help working against itself. A multi-purpose laser weapon that you'll continually upgrade throughout the game is incredibly useful, and you'd really enjoy using it if it didn't constantly need to be recharged. The steady introduction of more heavily armored enemies who hardly react when you shoot them also feels like self-sabotage, making your weapons feel less powerful later in the game. Major confrontations framed as boss battles also struggle to create much urgency or excitement.
Wolfenstein The New Order suffers from minor inconsistencies in nearly every aspect of the game, from its storytelling to its action. But the good news is, the game never feels consistently bad. Things are at least kind of interesting even when the pace lags or the story and gameplay don't quite line up. And from minute to minute, you're engaged in meaty, challenging combat that rewards smart tactical play that results in plenty of dead Nazis. Even if there are a few kinks.